the, uh, the context uh, by which decisions are made, choices are made, and then he can be involved in bringing the, the result that we're all looking for. When 9-11 hit, uh, everybody wanted God, everybody went back to church, because all of a sudden, we faced a problem we could not fix. When things died down, then people went back to business as usual. That's why we can't resolve these problems. God stays insulted, and it's kind of hard to get along with somebody who's insulting you all the time. This is also true in our personal life. When personal, in our personal choices, if we don't fear God and respect God, then uh, it's, it's sort of like a policeman who pulls you over. You, you dishonor him, and you've asked for more trouble. You know, you've not asked for mercy and help because you were wrong. You've asked for a ticket in jail. Let's examine ourselves as a nation in the light of God's law, the Ten Commandments, and see if we are doing that which is pleasing in his sight. You shall not kill. According to the FBI, approximately 18,000 people are murdered each year in the U.S. There are a total of 200,000 murders during the 1990s. Over 100,000 of those murderers were never brought to justice. America kills 100,000 children through abortion every month. Since the legalization of abortion in 1973, more than 52 million babies have been aborted. You shall not commit adultery. USA Today reported that 50 to 60% of married couples admit to adultery. Premarital sex is practiced by more than 75% of women and more than 80% of men by the age of 19. 45 million people are infected with a virus that causes genital herpes. 33% of all births are to unmarried mothers. Americans spend up to $13 billion every year on pornography. This exceeds the combined gross income of ABC, CBS and NBC. You shall not steal. Theft costs our country $500 billion each year. The FBI reported that there are more than 1.2 million motor vehicle thefts in the United States in one year. Every year, approximately 13 million people are victims of crime, with one and a half million of those being victims of violent crime. You shall not lie. The Barna Research Group found that 62% of Americans profess to be Christians, while 91% admit to lying regularly. You shall not covet. Americans now visit casinos more often than they attend professional sporting events. In their lust for more money, they lose in excess of $50 billion each year to lotteries, horse and dog tracks, casinos, and various other gambling venues, all because of greed. We also violate the first, second, third, and fourth of the Ten Commandments with our continual blasphemy, our idolatry, that is creating a God in our minds we're more comfortable with, and our form of godliness. Many political leaders profess to love God and yet stand for things that are repulsive and detestable to them. Our churches have priests that are proven to be pedophiles and so-called preachers who care about nothing but money, something the Bible condemns. Add to that that America has more than 680,000 rapes each year and spends over $400 billion a year on alcohol and drug-related problems, and we can see that as a nation, we're not doing too well morally. You know, in 2 Chronicles 15, 3 to 6, it becomes clear that there's a direct correlation between the social well-being of a people and the spiritual well-being of a people. That passage indicates that because people were not in touch with God, chaos broke out in society. I think that directly relates to our nation today because God has been marginalized and dismissed to the periphery of the culture. We are seeing uh, chaos uh, erupt in the culture on every level, personal, family, uh, you know, in communities, and, and now nationally and internationally. In fact, that passage says, nation rose up against nation. So whether it's the 9-11 issue or terrorism, uh, all of that's tied to America's lack of relationship with God. And if God is your problem, only God is your solution. So until the spiritual and theological gets right, the social will always be chaotic. Are you as concerned as I am about America? We love this country. We love its people. It's terrible to see what's happening. Did your heart break at the moral filth that's being pumped into the minds of our children? And they're being told that it's normal and okay? Does it grieve you to see diseases like cancer and others spreading across our country? Is there any real hope for America? Is there anything we can do? The answer is yes. And it's rooted in our relationship as a nation to Almighty God. We're a nation that is not afraid to talk about God. My faith and my personal relationship with Jesus Christ is so important to me that it gives me the strength to do what I do. I truly do believe it's a miracle from God. Georgia is turning to the power of faith, holding a prayer vigil at the state capitol. We pray that the rains will come. It follows Genesis, six letters. Peter. What's Exodus? That's it. Biblical freedom. So help me God. So help me God. Charlie, what can we do to help you out? 
Well, everyone that knows the work of prayer, you can pray for a greater Little Rock Baptist Church. With prayer to Almighty God. Answered prayers, and so many of them were your prayers, and she's so grateful. It is easier for this animal to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Uh, what is an elephant? Are you trying to improve on God's creation? He's pretty good. Yeah. Just say thank you. That's how I start. Wake up. Thank you, God. I was driving in today, and I've seen these forest fires, or here listening on the radio, these forest fires, and I'm like, hmm. Droughts, floods, forest fires, natural disasters, plagues, <laughs> I uh, see where you're wars, going. <laughs> rumors of wars. I've read this all someplace before. Good morning, America. Thank you, America. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I prayed before uh, my 16-year-old son died. Uh, I prayed before Elizabeth was uh, diagnosed with uh, cancer. There are all sorts of different ways that pastors can now touch people uh, and where people who are isolated can get the sort of spiritual help that they want and need. God bless America! We've become a nation that says we love God. We draw near to God with our lips, but our hearts are far from Him, as evidenced by our decaying moral condition. America is a nation obsessed with freedom. We have freedom of religion and the freedom to celebrate materialism and lust. We love porn. We love gambling. Drinking. Gluttony. Jumping in and out of marriages. Blitzy, trashy lifestyles. Our money says, in God we trust. We stand and sing. God bless America. God bless us or God help us. And yet still, the thought that we have somehow offended God doesn't even enter our minds. Instead, we blame all our problems on global warming, global cooling, El Nino, toxic gases, our enemies, Mother Nature, whoever she is, a hole in the ozone layer, anything but ourselves. Don't be fooled into thinking we can fix things up without God. That all we need to do is bring in the right political party, bring in the right legislation, fix the hole in the ozone layer, eat right and get plenty of exercise. Those things are good, but they won't fix our problem because it's far deeper than that. It has to do with our relationship to God. Even if we do eat right and exercise, as the experts tell us, we're not guaranteed of health and long life. Listen to these tragic words from Jacqueline Kennedy. As she lay dying of cancer, she said, I don't get it. I did everything right to take care of myself and look at what happened. Why doesn't God help us when there's a national crisis? Could it be because his holy name is used as a cuss word in our movies and on television? And blasphemy has become part of our culture. Could it be because we threw prayer out of our schools, outlawed the posting of the Ten Commandments in public places, and have taught our children that they weren't made by God, but by an unscientific theory called evolution? You know, if you look at the blessings of a nation, sometimes you measure that in terms of finances, maybe you measure it in terms of, of crime, maybe, maybe you measure it in terms of the happiness of the people. Well, here we are, the most financially blessed nation in the history of the world. We're probably the most successful nation in the history of the world. We have more freedom than anyone's ever had in history. Yet we find things like school shootings, we find things like more and more people on psychotropic drugs, all of these different things where you can see that there's a cultural decline in terms of our happiness. So we're losing the blessings that we've been given over the last century in terms of finances and everything else because we've lost the morality that puts all of those things into perspective. We can't do such things and click our fingers and expect God to come running like some sort of divine butler. As a nation like Israel of old, we're like an adulterous wife, and there can be no reconciliation without genuine repentance. It's not enough to acknowledge God with our lips, and at the same time, deny His divine power and authority in our lives. As our Creator, God demands total surrender to His will. The first and greatest commandment is to love Him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. To fail to do so, and at the same time, give ourselves to sin is asking for God's judgments. This was something our forefathers knew and proclaimed. Even insurance companies have got it right. If there's a tornado, a flood, a drought, or an earthquake, they call it 